What is the cycle of fourth and fifths? Why is it so important for us specifically as guitar players? And what's happening there? All right, so I'm gonna come clean and confess. When I started playing guitar, I just wanted to play chords, want to do solo. I want to play cool stuff. Now, that's awesome, but I didn't want to understand theory and that was a a big mistake. The reason I'm saying is a mistake because imagine, okay, an alien comes to my room. He, she, they are trying to get out and they don't know where the door is because this closet, the, the, the wall, the door, the window, they all look very similar with different handles. They don't even know it's a handle. So the theoretical information of knowing what is the door can get them into a different space of sound. These, these kind of elements are being used oftentimes in movies, right? When you want to kind of ex express this like almost strange thing that is happening, you know, you heard the sound before because these two centers are far apart. There is that music that we know <laughs> that is being created that is articulating that feeling of like, wow, this is really far, this is strange in a way. Oh, if you're feeling this video and getting some value, please click the like button, please subscribe, and maybe turn bell notifications on. Thank you. Music is sort of like shifting between geographical points. It's sort of like coordinates. So C major scale is one place, this is home base. But then when I'm going to visit my friend um, in China, maybe that's A flat. So it's kind of far from me. And then maybe I'm gonna say hi, back to my mom in New York, and then I'm going to F major, which is my, my body in Queens. My mom actually lives in Israel, so I should have given that as an example. But anyway, you get it. So it's like coordinates. So we want to understand the situation of how we're going from point A to point B and how and what devices we can utilize to do that. So if we understand the logic, not only the sequence of flat and sharp, which is cool and we'll go over that, but also the logic, then we're in a good place. Let's do this. All right, so a lot of you probably have seen these kind of diagrams. They're great, there's no problem with it, but I wanna understand and I wanna understand the sound that we're talking about. So first, there are two cycles that we're talking often about, cycle of fourth and cycle of fifth. What is that? Fourth is basically one, two, three, four. Literally one, two, three, four, if we're in the key of C major. Do, re, mi, fa, C, D, E, F. And guitar is actually tuned in that kind of way. So the fourth uh, system is a huge part of guitar because the open strings, E, A, D, G, this is all fourth between G and B. We have a major third and again, a fourth here. So a fourth is a huge part of the sound of this instrument. What is a fifth? One, two, three, four, five. C, D, E, F, G, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, so. That's a fifth. And this is the visual kind of cue in a way that we play on guitar. This is right the. The cycle of fourth. So I'm taking C major. C major scale as a sound. This is my template. I'm actually using Yoni and C major scale. I'm gonna copy paste. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do, si, do, so, fa, mi, re, do. That sound. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Into the next key. The next key is going to be a fourth up. How do I know what's a fourth up? Well, we just talked about it, but. Do, re, mi, fa. Okay, so now I'm gonna start from the note F. The same sound. So. Fa, so. That's my B flat, and that's the big change, cause one, two, three, four, whole tone, whole step, half step, fa, so, la, si, do, re, mi, fa. And you see, I'm getting the same sound of the F major scale from the note F, and then I get one flat, which is B flat. The next key from F would be B flat. Why is that? Because I'm going a fourth up from F, one, two, three, four. That's it, it's that simple. So from the note B flat, I'll play it here just because it's easier. B flat, C, D, E flat, one, two, three, four, right? So my four again has changed, it's a flat, it's an E flat, so I have B flat, E flat. So B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. So in the key of B flat, we have two flats, and this is how we start shifting and diverging from C. Now it's important to note that in the key of C major, we have zero accidentals. In the key of F major, we have one, and that's B flat. That means that these two keys share a lot of the chords. 
Well, they actually share almost all the chords and they share almost all the notes except one note, which is a B flat. So that means that we can shift from the key of C major to F major very easily. And actually, when you come to think about it, in music, it's been done so much. These two keys are very close by, so we'll shift oftentimes between these two centers. The same thing when we talk about the sharps between C and G. These are two centers that are very close, so it's extremely easy to shift with one note, one chord, and boom, you're in another center, which is refreshing as well. Now from E flat. Here I'm basically playing again E flat major scale and I'm getting the flats that I'm curious about. And you see I'm stacking them. So F had one, B flat had two, E flat has three. And these flats are being added. So in the key of E flat, we have the one, the first one we had, which is B flat. We have the second one, which is E flat. And we also have A flat. B mol, fa, so, la, mol, A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat. This is going to be the same case in every key. We have the flat and we're just stacking one more in the next key. The next key, again, we're going the cycle of fourth, is going to be again a fourth up. And with guitar, you can see that it's literally that motion. Do, fa, si, mol, mi, mol, la, mol, re, mol, fa, dies. Or G flat equals F sharp. We'll talk about it in a second. Okay, so we pause here. Now we're in A flat major. A flat major. A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat. Right? These are the notes. Again, you can hear the sound of the major scale starting from this note. And in order for me to create the sound of C major scale from A flat, I basically have to use these flats in the right places. And indeed, I have B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. Four flats in the key of A flat. And the next key you know it, D flat will have five flats. So that means basically the four that we had plus one. So, that is the sound of C major scale. Again, the color starting from that note, the D flat. And on guitar, it's extremely easy because we can shift it and we can see these notes in a hopefully clear way. Now, I would say that when you're working on this, try to ask yourself and try to make sure you understand it and see it. We want to also understand the degrees in these scales and these keys. So for example, if I am talking about the key of A flat, I want to know, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. What are the chords in the key of A flat? And this is where the cycle of fourth really comes into life because we start to understand the relationship between these centers. Let's just finish the flats and then I'll explain a little bit more about that. Okay, so we have D flat and then the next one is six flats and this is G flat. Oftentimes G flat and uh, equals F sharp, so this is kind of a hinge point where we shift to the sharp side. Um, you can see in this diagram as well. Basically, you can you can continue on if you wanted to, but it's just a lot of flats and sharp. It's totally possible, but it's just for convenience reasons, we kind of shift to the other side oftentimes. So G flat would be G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F, G flat. So again, a lot of a lot of accidentals here, right? But we're still doing that in order to get the sound of C major. When I started working on the cycle of fourth and understanding these two cycles, I did memorize the names of these notes. So where are the flats? Um, so basically, C, Mi, La, Re, Sol, Do, Fa, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. C flat and F flat. So these are the flats, right? And it's actually only reversed when you go to the sharp, so it's kind of cool. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, F sharp, and B sharp. When we talk about the sharp side, we're starting from C major, that sound, and we're going a fifth up. What is a fifth up? Do, re, mi, fa, sol, do, sol. Okay, sol. So that's a fifth up, that's G. And now I'm gonna build the C major scale from G. So basically, I'm playing G major scale, right? Sol, la, si, do, re, mi, fa, sol. Ah, here it is. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole, 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 and a half, right? So I get this F sharp, great. From G major, the next 
one in the in the cycle of fifth is D major. So I'm going a fourth up. So now I'm building C major scale from the note D. So let's try. That's D major scale. So we have two sharps. Next one, you know it, one, two, three, four, five. If this is D major, the next one is A major. Exactly the same way we did, if you remember, with the cycle of fourth, but just flipped. So C, zero, G, one, D, two, A major. We'll have three, like you can see. E, whoop, with a six. And it's important to connect to the sound and compare. So check out how this sounds. C major. I can play, you know, a few chords. And then, whoa, E major just sounds like a complete new universe. This is one of the reasons we want to understand and control this cycle of fourth and fifth to know what is the location, what is close, what is far, how can we get that? How can we shift maybe with a little diminish to this other location which is further away but then we can find a hinge chord, a chord that exists in the two keys to kind of smoothly shift back. So I know this is theory, but it's not theory. This is actually music, this is actually the sound. So understanding that is super crucial. Okay, so we did E major, now B major. So this is the sound of C major from B and I'm starting to get, you know, more and more accidentals. This is five accidentals and then I'm stacking them again. And F sharp would be six accidentals, like you can see. And when we're saying F sharp instead of going then to C sharp, which we can, we can decide that in, in uh, the chord F sharp we shift back to G flat and then we go back to the flat side. So we kind of get to five or six accidentals, but then we shift to the other side instead of stacking seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it just gets a little crazy. Possible if you want it, but it's not super necessary. What is important for us to understand is the relationship within the key. How we get from one key, C major to F major, and what are the notes that entails that sound of the major scale, and how are we getting these flats. It's important to memorize the cycle, but also to understand it. And if you're not sure about it, just slow it down. Playing this music, we really feel the sort of like expansion and contraction of these keys. And it's really beautiful. Try to feel it and think about it as location, as a graphic, as uh, sorry, geographical places, sort of like um, coordinates. And then I think it makes a lot of sense that C major feels in a certain way and E major feels in a complete different way, right? Just the sound shifting from here. And then, wow, I'm in a different place. I just traveled afar. Thank you so much for listening. If someone is interested to share to a friend that might not be super clear about the cycle of fourth and fifth, please do. And I'll see you next week. Peace.